Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap. Today's sort of like a breakfast themed soap making experience for you. Um, today I'm going to be making this soap. Of course, I'm taking this after I made the soap. And this is a coffee soap I call Espressway. And I can't stop walking by the soap curing shelves and smelling this one because it smells like a rich, nutty coffee. It just smells really awesome. And then there's this soap that I'm going to be showing you today as well. And this is my oatmeal soap. And this is a fragrance from Rustic Essentials that I really do like because um, I've had different fragrances before in my soaps with oatmeal and they tend to have like a perfumey scent to them when what I really want and what this fragrance gives me is a, just a nutty kind of oatmeal, wholesome scent without uh, a perfumey edge to it. So I really do like this. And stick. Um, around for the end of this video because I'm going to show you um, the little bit of browning that did occur in the coffee soap. These both have vanillin in them so I wanted to show you the browning effect but it turns out that the vanillin content in this one did not really turn the soap very brown. It's kind of like a nice oatmeal beige and the coffee um, fragrance that I have used before does turn dark and so even though it's been a couple days since I made this soap um, it hasn't browned that much, but with experience, I know after the total curing time, it does turn darker. But, um, you know, sometimes it, a fragrance smells so good, you don't mind the browning. And stick around to the end because I'll have some links to some other foodie types of soap that I made. Um, and I think you'll like those. So uh, let's get started with the soap making. So here you see me just grinding up the... Uh, espresso beans is a dark roast so that I can um, put it in my soap and it's just used as part of the liquids in the soap. I, I let the lye um, develop in distilled water separately from this water amount so that I don't have that ammonia scent that comes from when you put anything organic in with the lye. And so I'm going to just grind this up and put it in the little canister and wait till it brews and in the meantime I get to enjoy the great smell of this coffee. And I have to say that um, the coffee scent and the fragrance um, is even richer and more delicious than the actual brewing of the coffee, if that's even possible. So let's get on with the blending of the soap. And then following this will be the um, oatmeal soap. Okay, so here I have some gold with some titanium dioxide and I have my titanium dioxide here and some titanium dioxide here, but these are the only two that I'm going to add the fragrance to, so that'll have some natural browning. So this will end up being a beige type of color, this will be a goldish brown, and it's all guesswork because when the fragrance turns the soap brown, um, Sometimes it just turns everything a dark brown. So I have used this fragrance before and I don't remember it turning a dark brown. I do like this fragrance from Rustic Essentials because it is a, a nuttier type of oatmeal fragrance. I've had one before that had more of a perfumey quality to it. And I do like this one much better. So I want to be ready to be quick in my soap making today too because it's, I'm experimenting with a new recipe. I'm trying one with more cocoa butter and no palm. So we'll see how that works out. And this has colloidal oatmeal in it as well. So that's emulsified. Let's get that in. And I am just going to have a little bit of this white. Fragrance in there. So far it's staying pretty liquid.
Yeah, it's getting a little thick, but not overly so, so that's going to be perfect. I've made many small batches with new recipes that I'm testing out. It should be nice and creamy with the, all the cocoa butter in there. So let's bring in the mold. I think the way that I'm going to swirl this is to add the darkest part of the batter in here first. About half of it. And then I'm going to ladle in the portion with the fragrance and some titanium dioxide and it's laying pretty nice on top of the first pour. I'm gonna get almost all of that in there. But first, I'm gonna take my hanger tool and do a little swirl in there, more than just a little. I don't have to worry that it's going to uh, brown because I don't have opposing colors in there. I'll get some more of this dark one right there. I'm going to get this all in there because the white is going to be reserved for the top to make it look like there's cream on top of the oatmeal. So, so far, this new recipe is looking good. There's no separation of oils. It's not getting extra hard, because you know me, I like to swirl. Hmm, this, um, Nutty, really wholesome, almost like a pastry scent in this oatmeal fragrance is smelling really good. And it's still behaving. It is getting a little thicker, but it's doing fine. So I'm going to get just a little bit of this white in there. I want to swirl that a little bit too. I like to simulate that swirl of cream that you put on top of things like this. Any texture that you see in here is probably the colloidal oatmeal. And I'm going to do a textured top on this. The first thing I'm going to do is clean up the sides a little bit. And this is the perfect consistency to do this spoon top. It could be even a little more set up, but I want more of a kind of soft peak, so this is perfect. That's, that's about it. No fancy topping on this one. Just want it to be pretty pure. So this new recipe seems to be working, so I'm gonna do a second two for one on the soap today, and this one's a coffee soap. The first thing I'm going to do is add my cream and coffee. My little soap room, it just smells really good. It smells so good that I actually made myself some coffee too. 
and this has my kaolin clay in it as well. That's what's making it thick here. Okay, then let's add the lye. I'm soaping at about 100 degrees today. Just a little warmer than I usually do by a few degrees. The sodium lactate in there as well. And before I blend that anymore, I'm going to add my delicious coffee scent. That's what's making this room smell so good. Okay, so let me show you what I'm doing with my colors. Not too different from the oatmeal one, but they are slightly different. This is my titanium dioxide. Now remember there's fragrance in this already and it's going to brown just like the oatmeal one. I've added some orange and some copper to this one because when the, and some titanium dioxide, because when the fragrance turns that dark, I don't want a dark chocolate brown, I want, um, I want a little orangey brown to that. And then this is going to be my top, so I have some titanium dioxide there. So I wasn't going to add any fragrance to the white, this one right here, but I forgot. So we'll just hope that since there's some extra titanium dioxide in there that it still stays a little bit white. So let's blend this up a bit. Beautiful creamy soap. It's not going to stay that color. You might ask why I didn't blend my white first to not get my other colors in there. And it's because I forgot again. Okay, that does look a little whiter, so maybe so maybe the titanium dioxide will keep that white after all. I kind of doubt it. You can't count on the titanium dioxide to keep it from browning. It'll continue to brown quite a bit. Still nice and creamy. We all know the secret to a good soap is all in the preparation. Okay, so here's my gold mica drizzle for the end. Let's see, here's what I want to do with this. I was going to do a hanger swirl, but I think I'm actually going to have more control with a chopstick. So let me plop this in. And what I'm going to do, so that there's almost an ombre effect, I hope, is to keep repeating the steps I'm doing right here all the way up. I'm going to get rid of this darker color. But I like those really nice wisps of uh, lighter color. It's almost like when you're pouring cream and coffee. I'm going to get this all in there. Okay, so let's do this again. Add some more of this lighter color. Do this again. So in theory, as I add more of this lighter to the top, it should just have a gradual kind of effect and be lighter at the top but I'm not going to swirl very deep at all. Oh, 
Oh, I love this color as it is. Maybe you know, what is this nice sort of, not even tan, but lighter than tan color remind you of? Okay, now finally, let me get this lightest color on top. It doesn't look that much lighter. Would have been pure white. I remember not to add the fragrance to this part. There is a vanilla content to this fragrance, which is what makes it smell so awesome. But because of that, we have to deal with the browning. That's what vanillin does. And I'm going to add my drizzle. And then I'll see if... Actually, let me see if this is ready to swirl. Oh yeah, that's great. I really love the gold drizzle on top. And this is a gold mica. So that's really nice, but I really do like blending or making the texture to the top of the soap and drag that gold mica drizzle along with it. I think it needs a little bit more right there. Clean up on the sides. I'm going to add a little bit of glitter to this one. And I'm going to spray the top with some alcohol. Try to prevent some ash. And this is the second soap that I've made with that new cocoa butter recipe. I really do like it. It seems to not accelerate. And let's bring you back for a double cut. Let's do the cutting of the oatmeal soap and the coffee soap. I call this one Expressway. See you in a few. Okay, so let's first cut Espressway, the coffee soap. And this hasn't finished going through any kind of browning at all yet. It always does look a little yellow at the start. And this looks like caramel, but it'll turn a darker brown. more of what I thought was going to go on inside there. And I'll have some pictures at the end after these have turned brown a bit more. And stay tuned for the cutting of the oatmeal soap right after this. This smells so good. So if anything, I think that there's going to be more distinction, more contrast in the swirls when the brown part becomes a little darker. And I wish it would stay just like this because that's a nice coffee color. Couple more cuts. There's the top. And 
And here's our last cut before I cut the oatmeal soap. And I'll cut this one into some samples. Okay, let's bring out the oatmeal soap. Okay, so we're back to cut the oatmeal soap. And this one smells really good. If you see any of those little particles of colloidal oatmeal in there, um, they're not as prominent as before. I grind up the oatmeal very fine and I soak it in my liquids and then I blend it some more so it's really integrated into the soap and it's probably in the functioning of soap my one of my top two soaps my avocado soap is just a really great soap too so this one will not brown as much as the coffee soap, but it's pretty close right now to the same color. A little less yellowing because the fragrance doesn't have as much vanillin in it. Which is good because I want them to look different. And the scent of this is more nutty, soft, more foody than the other fragrance I used to use. This one's from Rustic Essentials. I smelled it out of the bottle and I thought this is pretty wonderful. Really has that oatmeal color. A couple more cuts. The titanium dioxide really behaved in both these soaps really well, so I'm happy about that. Also, and one more cut. Thanks for watching, subscribing, and commenting. Really appreciate that. And uh, I'll have some more soaps. I've got a really interesting idea for a soap for my next one. It involves more bright colors. So after the coffee soap and this oatmeal soap, it's kind of beige and brown. I'm going to return to the bright colors in the next soap. So we'll leave that as a surprise right now. Thanks for watching again, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.